Hello and welcome. This is Michelle Christensen of One Noteworthy Life, and in this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to collapse or expand a numbered or bulleted list in OneNote, and I'll show you some of the formatting options for those lists as well. I'm filming in OneNote for Windows 10, so if your screen looks a little bit different than mine, it might be because you're using a different device or version of OneNote. So you could make a plain list just like this. This is uh, super basic. I just typed the items out. Um, and this list has no formatting, no bullets or numbering or anything like that. And this is the most basic way to make a list. And if this works great for you, then that's fine. You don't need to go any further. But with a list like this, you're missing some of the functionality that comes with using the formatted list feature in OneNote. Built right into OneNote is the ability to make bulleted or numbered lists. You can find this feature right here at the top of your screen in the Home menu. So we're in the Home menu, you can see over here. And it's right about in the middle, maybe a little closer to the right, depending on your screen. Let's take a look at that same list, but add some numbers to it. So I'm going to highlight my entire list, and you could manually highlight this by scrolling on it. Or you could just highlight the text container for this list. Uh, and I'm going to click the numbering button. And as you can see, it just added the numbers uh, right away. And already, to me, this looks kind of more clear. Like, I can see that I have 16 items. I can see where the halfway mark is, etc. You don't have to decide ahead of time if you want your list numbered. The format can be added later. And the same is true when we're adding bullet point formatting after you've made your list. I'll show you the bullet points in the next section of this video. So now I want to add some levels to the list and make it look a little bit more like an outline. So I'm going to make Alaska, which is currently item 2, a sub-item, and I'm going to click my tab key. I'm on that line, number 2. And so two things happen. One is it indented Alaska and made it a sub-item, but then the entire less rest of the list reset itself. So now we only have 15 items. So I'm just going to show you that a couple more times. And which states I'm picking has no meaning, so <laughs> I'm not favoring or unfavoring any state. Now we're looking at a list with two levels, but you can also use the tab key to get to three levels. So let's go down here to item number seven and make the middle item a another level down by using the tab key. So Indiana is now uh, item 7A with a Roman numeral one. This kind of looks like... Um, the traditional outline you might use if you were writing or outlining a paper or something like that. And you also have other formats for numbered lists. So I'm going to again highlight my whole list and I'm going to come up here and click the drop down menu under numbering. So our first option after this main one is to go with Roman numerals. This is fine if you like this, it's great. Uh, to me it's not quite as clear um, just because I'm not as familiar with looking at those Roman numerals. Uh, we also have capital letters, which you could use as well. And then our final option is uh, lowercase letters. So any of these are perfectly fine if they work for you. I'm going to go back to... Um, so I want to reset this back to the main numbering um, that we first had, the kind of outline format. But when I click this, you'll see that the numbers go away because it's cycled all the way through the options. We had the first option, the second option, the third option, the fourth option. When I click the numbering button again, it removed the formatting. And that's how you remove the numbers if you ever want to. So I'm again highlighting my list. I'm going to re-click the numbers and everything's back in place in that traditional outline format. So now I'm going to show you a, kind of a similar demonstration, but we're going to use the bulleting format. And I have that same list again, and I'm going to apply bullets to it using the same formatting. Highlighted my whole list, I'm going to click on bullets, and you get these nice crisp bullets that you can see. And it, using the same technique, which is the tab key, you can um, make sublevels in your bullet list. I'm going to make some sublevels here. And then you can also go down to another level. So let's make this one a third level, and we'll make this one a third level. And what I like about this, um, this is the default bulleting format. Each of these three levels has different bullet formats. So you've got the solid circle, the circle that looks like an O, and then the square for the different levels. 
you do have other options for bullets, but you lose that formatting. So let's pick the square one. So when I click away, you can see that these are all square. And to me, this doesn't look quite as clear what the levels are. So I'm just going to show you a couple more of these. This is one I kind of like, these diamonds. These are kind of, I don't know, they're just fun to look at. And let's look at one more. Let's look at check marks. I like those as well, but I don't know how useful they are given that I use a check mark to indicate something's complete. Let's go back to the main bullet format. And as you can see, I click that and it shut the bullets off just like it did under the numbering. And then when I click it, it'll turn them back on again. So for both of these demonstrations, I've shown you that a list can go to three levels. I don't know that uh, I don't know how much further you can go. I tested both of these out to four levels, um, and I'm not sure how much further you could go. But I don't know that I would ever use more levels than that. I'd probably split them up if I needed more than four levels. And one of the cool things about both numbered and bulleted lists is that if you add in a random item, the whole list will reset itself. So, for example, I am going to add in here uh, a random item. And I'm going to make it a sub item and it kind of just falls right in. It's, you know, if it's supposed to be a top level item, it'll have the proper bullet. If it's supposed to be a sub item, it'll have the proper bullet. The same is true with a numbered list. I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to add in a, let's see, I'm going to add in a random item here. And because I added it under item 4A, this is now item 4B. Um, but if that was a mistake, I can hit the shift tab and bring it back to level five. Or I can also hit the tab key and now it's back to 4B. And I can hit the tab key again and now it's item 4A. And just in case you missed that, it's shift tab to go up a level. Now I wanna show you a less obvious feature, which is how to collapse a bulleted or numbered list. So if you have multiple levels, like I do on this list, you can collapse your list just to show the top level. Uh, so for example, on this list, we have nine items and it's not super obvious on this because you can see the entire list on my screen right now. But if you had a list that was much more extensive and you couldn't see on your screen, you might want to collapse this. So I'm going to hover over Arizona here and you can see that I have a well, actually, I've clicked in it. I can have a flag. I have this flag right next to it. And when I hover over the flag, it turns into a cross. So it points up and down, left and right. So when I double click that, it has now collapsed Arizona into one point. And I can do the same thing down here in Idaho, where I have uh, three levels. And so, it, you know, if you had a really extensive list, you could see just the top level if you wanted. And one of the things I like about this is that these plus signs are really obvious. So when you're looking at this, you can see just the top levels, but you also know there's something there to see if you need to expand it. Uh, if you do want to expand it, you just double click on the plus and it goes away, it, the collapse goes away and the whole thing expands. The same is true with a bulleted list. I'm going to go here to Hawaii where we have three levels. I'm going to hover over the flag that appears to the right of, to the left of Hawaii, and now we have a plus sign. And the last thing I want to make sure that I cover is how to get rid of this formatting if you want to. I let your whole list, and you click on the numbering icon again, and all the numbers are gone. You do need to reset the indentations if you want to do so. Same thing is true for the bulleted list. Highlight the whole thing. Click on the bullets and they're gone. Now you will notice though that the collapse stayed in place on Hawaii. So if I double click that, it shows up again and you, you have to remove those as well. So that's it for today. I wanted to just really show you that ability to expand and collapse because while you may have spotted the variety of formats for numbering and bulletin lists just by looking at your menu, you may not have known about this feature if you don't know it exists. I myself only became aware of it when someone pointed it out to me while we were broadcasting live. I don't know if I ever would have found it or thought to look for it otherwise. 
Thank you so much for watching, and if I missed anything on bulleted or numbered lists, please let me know in the comments so that we can share our knowledge and help each other out. If you like this, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button, and I would love it if you would subscribe by hitting the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye!